Welcome to the Reinvestors Virtual Road Trip. We are going across the country from coast to coast, interviewing real estate investors and professionals from each province and showcasing the towns that they invest in so that you, wherever you're watching from, can get more knowledge of investing in other successful markets. Yeah, today's guest was born in Prince George, a small town in the interior of BC. In 2017, he bought his first rental property and now has finished up his sixth successful Burr strategy where he is getting the majority of his money back out of his deals and using it to continue purchasing more. This guy is hungry for success right now. And he, as he is transitioning from his full-time job as a power engineer into a full-time real estate investor, I've had many conversations with this guy and he is one of the most passionate people I've ever met about this town. And he is excited to shine some light on what the potential Prince George brings. So I'm excited to welcome to the road trip, Evan McLeish. Welcome buddy. Hey guys, how's it going? Man, okay. I, am, I am fired up for this interview because I've never seen someone so excited to share information on a town that is so you know, unknown or hidden or kind of a, a hidden gem. So why don't you quickly just start by sharing a little bit with us you know, who you are, where you came from, what you're doing, and uh, some of the properties that you're looking at right now. So my name is Evan McLeish. Uh, I was born in Prince George. I was born and raised there. Uh, currently, I live in Quinnell. I'm a power engineer. I uh, bought my first property back in 2017. Uh, what I do is I'll buy the single family homes and I'll put basement suites in them and uh, do the burst strategy where I can pull majority uh, of my cash out of the places. And um, yeah, so been able to do that uh, successfully for uh, six properties now and keep the ball rolling. Nice, man. Do you have a bit of a construction background or how are you, are you managing them yourselves? Are you doing the renovations yourself? Are you subbing it all out? What does that look like? So I do have a trades background. I do. Um, I worked in the roofing industry for a few years, uh, sheet metal for a few years after that. Um, I also have a welding certificate. So, and I've worked on big job sites too, where uh, I've worked around all types of different trades and stuff. So very familiar with that, uh, with that area. Um, on these projects, I'll do a lot of the, um, depending on the budget of the place, I'll do uh, majority of the renovations myself, but also subcontract, you know, skills and, and things that I don't have or, uh, you know, certified uh, tradesmen. Cool, man. And what got you excited about real estate? Like, like what takes you from being a power engineer to doing six successful Burr strategies and uh, making all that happen. Like where, where did that real estate intuition come from? You know what, when you, when you start hearing the stories of people already walking that path and uh, preaching the word, they are, um, you know, it, it's the freedom it gives. It's, uh, it's the cash, uh, you know, you creating that cash flow. And um, yeah, it's, it's really just um, kind of the lifestyle you can make out of it. And uh, basically, you know, like I said, it's not for uh, it's not for the big corporations anymore. Just uh, you know, anybody can do it and be successful at it and uh, create a good living out of it. Totally, man. Now, um, where can people reach out to you the best if they wanted to get a hold of you and ask about some questions about Prince George? We're going to dive deep into it now, but if people wanted to reach out and uh, get in touch with you, what's the best way? So they can reach out to me at uh, on Facebook. Evan McLeish, um, or they can reach out to me on my email, which is McLeish underscore one at hotmail.com. Cool. We'll put, uh, yeah. that, in. We'll put yeah. that in the notes. Sweet. Well, this is a, this is a town that I basically know absolutely nothing about other than it's too far North for me to live there. And, uh, so I know you came real prepared, man. Um, I think we're going to share our screen real quick and I'd just love for you to take us through some of the economic drivers and you know, what's happening in your market. So here's a, you know, here's a presentation that you prepared, you know, thank you so much for coming this prepared. Uh, this really makes our jobs easy. And uh, why don't you just walk us through what you got here? Yeah. So I got a few slides here. First one is vacancy rates. As you can see in the last uh, four or five years, vacancy rates have stayed low, below 5%. And um, I, de I generally don't have any problem uh, renting my properties out. What's, what's with the big dip and boom here? Was there something that happened in that time frame that caused the vacancy to rise so high? 
Uh, I think that's around the time that the um, economic crisis happened. So um, I don't know too many facts about that, but uh, I would imagine that would play a factor, right? But um, Typically what happens in those cycles is uh, in like rural communities, uh, jobs get lost. And so people move from rural cities and go down to major hubs where there's more job opportunity and employment. Um, and so that's typically why you see that type of spike in vacancy rates um, in the middle of, of you know, downturns, corrections, and depressions. The coolest thing for me is watching that <coughs> recover pretty quickly, though. It would look like mm -hmm. it was just a small blip, so it's not part of the, uh, the actual trend, which is awesome. Yeah, the population of Prince George has been steadily going up throughout the years and uh, industries moving into towns. As you can see on this slide, um, the 2019-2018 permits are, um, you know, skyrocketed there. 2019, uh, that's not actually the full number. Uh, 2019 ended off with 221.1 uh, oh. million permits. Oh. Uh, so the last, I think that ended in like November or uh, end of October. So the last two months had 30 million more permits for the town. Wow. So quite a bit higher than that, yeah. And then, yeah, this is, uh, this is just your average sales price. So I kind of go off this when I'm looking at, uh, you know, the trend up, what I can buy into a house at, uh, what it'll praise out at, and if it's steadily trending up. So uh, I think the, I have the exact numbers here, but uh, the average house sale price in 2019 ended at 360 and uh, your average uh, sale price so far for the uh, 2020, and that's March to March, is uh, 408,000. That's nice. rising pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, and, and they all do that. They've, they've basically been steady climbing uh, two or three percent or more every year. That's awesome. Then you have a labor force thing here. I think you wanted to share a little bit about just like so many people have this perception of Prince George. It's, you know, just like an industry town, one trick pony kind of thing. But every conversation we've had, you've been telling me the opposite. So. Yeah, I mean, that's and that's what these slides show, right? Like they're not, um, you know, we do have forestry industry. We do have pulp mill up here, uh, sawmills. And um, but, you know, we also have uh, UMBC which is, I do believe they're adding an engineering program on there. Um, we have sales and service industry, healthcare, uh, and just shows you the diversification that we have, that, that we have up north here. It's not just, uh, you know, one trick pony town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just some really cool statistics, man. I'm so grateful for you bringing all this information in because when we're studying a town like this, we don't even know a lot of these information. So the fact that you're able to bring all this stuff in just shows the research that you've done on your town and the reason why you're enjoying it there. Yeah, for sure. It's really, uh, you know, it's really a gem that I think a lot of people don't know about and uh, can definitely reap some rewards from investing in the area. Tell me a little bit about like what life is living or what life is like living in, you know, a, a town like this. So Prince George is at that point where it's uh, it's got you know over a hundred thousand people, so it's got a lot of uh, you know it's got a lot of industries here, and we have a lot of you know paid entertainment. But you're also in the north where you can go. Uh, you know we have multiple lakes up here. People go camping. If you're outdoorsmen. You know you're not uh, you're not that far west from the Rockies where you can go for hiking and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's really diversification, right? It's uh, you can go camping all around, or you can come in, and we have uh, we have a lot of paid entertainment through uh, you know playhouses or the um, you know just just anything. A lot of good restaurants, and uh, we have a lot of craft breweries that have opened up here. Probably the same as down south, right? That's kind of taken off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You're you're rural, but you also have a lot of uh, the major city, uh, big city attractions. Yeah, it's kind of like a hub for a lot of other towns as well, right? Yeah, so if you head out um, uh, west, like you 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 know you head to Prince Rupert, you got the ports coming in there. 
uh, the north kind of connects Fort St. John and Grand Prairie, a lot of oil and gas coming in through up north. Um, the east, you know, and that's the thing uh, when you come up to Prince George, you got you got uh, you got Prince George, and then you got a highway going north, west, east, and south. But a lot of if you're coming from any of those directions, you have to come through Prince George to head mm -hmm. south. So that kind of makes it the hub up here, and why a lot of uh, a lot of industries kind of make their, you know, central station in Prince George. Gotcha. So on the, like, on the investment side of things, what are some strategies that really do work well in Prince George? So what I do and what my bread and butter is, is uh, buying single family homes and putting basement suites in them. Mm -hmm. and that seems to be a strategy that has worked well for myself. Um, if you can buy in at a uh, good price point, then um, you can generally get majority of your money back and rent out for uh, for a good amount of money as well. I think you're buying at like the the two fifty or something mark, right? And yeah, the last property is uh, two fifty purchase. Yeah. Is is that price point uh, very competitive? Like, are you going into multiple offers at that point, or are you finding like a unique type of positioned home where you know maybe it's really under you know valued and you get to bring some creativity to it and you're the only one looking at it what's the demand like it is high demand for okay. sure you have to come knowing what you're doing being prepared a lot of these uh properties i've come into and uh and i've just thrown a bid on them and then had it accepted and went and looked at it after um i looked at you know i look at at least 10 deals a day i know what's a good one when i see it mm -hmm. It's very easy for me to pinpoint it, but um, generally, if I am the first one to grab, uh, you know, puts it under contract, there's multiple offers uh, behind me. And yeah, that that particular price point in 250 is relatively low. Um, you know, I I probably could have sold that a week later for 270 or something like that. It was just a particular situation. So. Nice, gotta like that. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm assuming just like in, you know, that part of the world, one of the high like demand pieces of a home would be like storage for your toys, right? Is that something that you're always constantly having to look for or does most property up there kind of come prepared with that already? Uh, so a lot of the houses in town here have been built from 1960 to 1980, big housing boom in around that time. Uh, so there's, there's a fair amount of single car garages uh, in those kind of houses just connected to it for storage. Um, as far as our basement suites go, we try and, you know, build like a storage area underneath the staircase and everything like that. But, um, yeah, generally the guys up here with all their toys, they don't mind parking it in the driveway. Cause there's, there's too many for one garage. That's for sure. Um, it's a really good point because uh, Steve and I are investing in a smaller town just north of where we are. And that's one of the biggest things that we get asked is, you know, they want multiple parking spots. They want big storage. They want that compared to, you know, Victoria, where we live in, you know, most people are downsized. They understand the condo size living. So um, that's interesting to um, a good point Steve just brought up is that, you know, I'm sure that's probably a big feature when you're looking at properties there is just making sure they have spots to park and, and spots to do that kind of stuff. I want to dive a little deeper into some of the numbers now on that property. Um, you and I have had multiple conversations uh, around just investing up there and you've called me on quite a few properties that we should be looking at it or possibly partnering on. And um, after seeing the numbers, it's like, it, it makes sense. It's a good place to invest. I just hear so many horror stories of the town. So that's why I'm so glad to be connected with you. Um, let me just pull up one of the, um, uh, the numbers here, but quickly break out for us. What are things looking like? What are they renting as I pull this up for you? Um, so right now we have this place. So it's a, it's a 2,200 square foot house. We have it rented out for $2,800 a month. Uh, so that's 1,600 up, 1,200 down. Um, so uh, as you can see in this slide, we purchased it for 250. Uh, the renovation cost was 80. Uh, and that includes our private financing for the deal. Um, and then the ARB afterwards is uh, 400,000. So all said and done, um, you know, we can pull out $950 cash flow a month on this place. That's so cool. So many people um, around 
the nation are looking to invest in properties for cash flow. And uh, at this point, that's, you know, getting $900 a month cash flow is not something you're going to find here in Victoria and probably not in the major cities. So going outside of there. And um, I know this one, you know, we, we dissected this a bit with you before the call and just love seeing some of your numbers across here that you actually have proper vacancies in there. You have, you know, the repair maintenance, you have property management, even though, you know, it can be negotiated in the partnerships, things like that of how, if something does go south, it's taken care of. And I just love seeing your numbers, the way they're all laid out and how they turned out and still being able to pull in incredible return on investments. Um, one of the things we don't talk about in this particular um, performa is the, um, the burst strategy, like the refinance back out. So, you know, you're $134,000 in, but you're able to pull quite a bit out of that property. What's, what's that looking like right now? Obviously you've done five or six of them now. Are you able to, to pull most of your money and, and get, are you putting that right back into deals? How is that looking for you as you're doing that? Yes. Always, always putting it into the next deal, right? <laughs> that's, that's what you do, right? You just roll it into the next one. Um, yeah, pulling pulling majority of our cash out on each one. Um, well, uh, uh, you know, you might leave ten or twenty thousand in, but that's about it. Uh, as far as this one, uh, we were able to um, refinance. Uh, I had a, one of my realtors come in for a market analysis. I was able to put a second mortgage on it and go and purchase another property right after. Yeah, I want to break that down a little bit because that was a, the, not the first time I've heard it, but the first time recently I've heard it. And so we've had some issues with appraisals, especially with uh, some of the pandemics that are going on and just some of the scare in the market. And our appraisals are coming back hard for us to be able to get the refinance back out to get the actual appraisals. And I was chatting with you about it and you brought it up that you had your agent come in and give you a price of what the house is worth. Uh, not based on the appraisal, but based on what the agent says it is. And you took that and got a second mortgage on it exactly as if you did from the bank. And then you're just waiting until everything kind of clears up and then you'll go get the proper appraisals. Just where did that strategy come from? Like, that's so cool that you're doing that and trying to find ways to change the appraisal system. So the first thing I'll say is that, um, you know, find a good realtor and talk with him about where he sees numbers, you know, where you buy in and where people are trying to sell them at. Those are kind of, uh, you know, that's what people want. But that's not exactly what it's going to appraise out at. So you have to be true uh, to your numbers, right? Go off of, go off of what it actually uh, is going to appraise at with multiple comparables and a knowledgeable realtor. And then that'll show you what you need to buy in at. So where a lot of people get into trouble with these is that they kind of buy higher, hoping for that higher appraisal um, through, you know, my realtor and everything like that. He can tell me that appraisal at the end uh, conservatively. And then I'll put a second mortgage on that, on that conservative number. And then I can use that um, money in the meantime to go purchase another property. And my rental, my renters will pay both of those mortgages in the meantime. Dude, that's pure gold. I think uh, I, I don't want that to get overlooked because that's so many people right now are getting overlooked on appraisals thinking they have to leave all their money in the deal. And you just went and said, no, nah, I don't want to leave my money in here. I'm going to go find another way to do this. And obviously you have some good partners if they're trusting your realtors appraisals. And you've obviously done the work to get people excited about that and built the trust with them, which is incredible. So um, dude, kudos to you for finding a way to get around it. Cause I know that's probably one of the biggest issues right now, at least in BC is just that appraisals are coming back so low because everyone's trying to be conservative and not inflate that market. So kudos to you for making that happen. Thanks buddy. What's been one of like the hardest pieces about um, doing these, these types of bird strategies for you up in Prince George? Um, I guess, so Prince George is at that point where it's, uh, it's growing exponentially every year. So when people try and sell houses that are need and repair, they want that higher asking price. So that kind of goes back to, you have to, you know, go off of a market analysis, go back and then have that, purchase price where you want to buy it at right so it's uh yeah that's the that's the problem is that people are asking for that higher buy-in price but in reality that appraisal price has not gone up mm -hmm. so so that makes it difficult uh you know so you have to really watch it about what you buy it in so you can get all your money on the back end when you pull out gotcha um i meant to ask you previously about just I know Prince George has a lot of um, 
growth coming to it over the years with new jobs, big projects coming in. Can you tell us a little bit about what, you know, some of those details are? Yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, here's just a few big projects that are coming in. Uh, we have an oil fins. Um, it's, I, I think that's the company, but basically they take, uh, um, petrochemical and make plastic out of it. Uh, this is a five dot six billion dollar project going in around Cloud Lake, which is about thirty minutes north of Prince George. Um, it's going to have about two thousand three thousand jobs during the build stage, and then thousand jobs uh, permanent employment when it's done. Nice. So that's one of them. Uh, we're getting. Um, we have a hemp facility going in, three hundred fifty million dollars to build that. Um, and they're going to lease land from the local farmers to uh, grow the hemp and stuff. So that kind of helps the local uh, community oh. here. Um, and that'll employ uh, 1,500 full-time jobs. Um, and then, uh, I mean, just throughout the city, we've had uh, a brand new Marriott, brand new Best Western built uh, in the last couple of years. Um, oh. They're rebuilding uh, one of our high schools. Um, I think they're going through each one of them. They've already built one, uh, Dutchess Park. They built that about a decade ago. They're building, and I think they have plans to build, rebuild each one of them. Um, we got two new Hilton hotels coming in in uh, wow. College Heights there, which is the nicer area of Prince George. So, that's yeah. So, that's so rad that there's doing that and i know there's been a bit of a, a stigma around prince george and i you know it's going to take a while to get rid of that stigma around it of uh you know having some uh bad apples living there and, and some bad stuff going on but it sounds like this stuff is helping clean up the area is that what you're kind of seeing now the trends going that way of you know things just being a little bit more cleaned up because of all the stuff that's being drawn there and the population growing and things like that well you know i can speak to this is that i've was born and raised in Prince. <laughs> you know, I've lived there. I, you know, so I've been involved in Prince for 31 years now. You know, I, a lot of people, when they mention Prince, they talk about the possible crime up here or, you know, I think that is the main one. But, I mean, you're never, it's not, you know, I think everyone goes to, like, the worst case scenario and, and you know, people are, you know, just running amok and causing chaos. But it's never... Uh, it's never been a problem. You know, you don't even see it, even if it is happening. Like it's, it's really not, it's not a big ass thing that people think it is right. We have no more, no less than, than any other town in the North. So that would be the big stigma. I'm guessing everyone's kind of uh, going to all the time. Right. But um, if you, you look at our demographics, we have a lot of uh, married and common law people living in town here. Um, you know, when you go around town, there is a lot of uh, suburbs, families. It's a very family knit community, very safe community. So just a, a quick piece of advice here before we jump into like our, our, our rapid fire round here, you know, for, uh, you know, you've been born and raised there, you're investing there, you live there. Um, for somebody who was like me, who doesn't know anything about Prince George other than what we just had in this conversation, what would be a piece of advice to me as an investor coming in and looking into Prince George? Like, is it, uh, I don't know, I'll just leave that open for you. Well, I mean, you can reach out to me. I'm more than happy to drive around town, show you all the neighborhoods and, and talk about possible investment opportunities. Um, yeah, the, I guess the best thing would do to be reach out to local investors, um, you know, get recommendations from them. And uh, basically, if, if you want to get over uh, the stigmas or what the town is, just I've, I've had multiple realtors I've shown through town from lower mainland and Okanagan that have come up and realized that, you know, the place is developing it is it is building and it, it's not, uh, it is a safe place to live for sure. Uh, one last thing for me before we jump in is um, what's the multifamily space look like there? Is there a lot of apartment buildings changing hands? Is there a lot of apartment buildings there? Is there a lot being built? What does the multifamily space look like there? So uh, there is a fair amount of multifamily buildings getting built in the last couple of years. Uh, student housing, um, then you're getting uh, um, you're getting student housing, and then you're getting like low income housing. So uh, one big thing for Prince right now, and I do believe 
applications end in December 2020, but you can apply for our, uh, it's a multifamily incentive in Prince George downtown core, which uh, I, I'll have double check my facts on this, but um, you, I do believe you can avoid not paying taxes for 10 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't like so, that. Yeah. So it's pretty good. And there, that's kind of the incentive that has brought a fair amount of people developing in Prince George and, and uh, things like that. But that can be found on the Prince George uh, city website. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things like that that people always forget about is when you're building and, and buying and stuff like that. There is a lot of incentives from the cities around multifamilies and, and building stuff. I know in uh, some of the towns were in, if you keep it as a rental for 10 years, then you don't have to pay the development permits and things like that. So there's a lot of cool incentives there. Mm -hmm. um, jumping into our rapid fire section, just some quick questions to throw at you. Respond with whatever you think fits. What's one thing every visitor needs to do or see in your town? So I would go downtown. Uh, there is a lot of um, kind of mom and pop specialty restaurants. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, we also have um, three craft breweries and a few. Uh, you know, streets walking distance. Um, so you can get a lot of, a lot of culture and a lot of different foods and a lot of different, uh, you know, food and drink to try down there. Cool. Nice. I've actually had um, a couple of the Prince George beers as I am a fanatic for craft beers and they're pretty tasty. There's one that's, um, I want to say it's called Crossroads. Yeah. Yeah. Super good. Um, yeah. Maybe along the same lines. What's a uh, a local business that you want to give a shout out to? <laughs> I was going to say Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, so that one's um, that that one's a really cool place. Uh, they kind of got uh, a little picnic area with picnic tables outside. They actually have a um, a stone pizza oven where you can make, get like handmade pizzas out there. Oh, cool. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, besides all that, the, the beer is exceptional, uh, won multiple awards. We also have uh, Trench Brewery, which is very similar to, the, to Crossroads, and uh, they do well up here. They make good beer. Nice. Are you seeing like restaurants opening up again? Like, is this, uh, is, is COVID even impacted you much or are things just operating as normal? It's, I would imagine it's about the same as you guys are probably seeing, right? Okay. Just phases out. People take advantage of the phases, right? And uh, so when you want, so when you want to reopen, you're going to reopen as, as quickly as you can to keep that mm -hmm. economy going. But uh, yeah, no, people, um, you, see, you see a lot of restaurants like uh, the balcony and patios are open and separate and people are separated out there. So. Perfect. Cool. Uh, if you could have a fireside chat with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? <laughs> oh, that's on the spot. <laughs> oh man. Um, actually, oddly enough, I'd talk to Don Campbell. Mm, nice. Great. That would be a great one. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. What's uh, a favorite real estate related book or resource? So uh, I'll probably say what majority of people say. Uh, I listen to the Bigger Pockets podcast. That's what I started with. Mm -hmm. um, a book that uh, I will mention is um, I think Julie Julie Broad. Is that how you say her name? Broad. She's that revenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Julie Broad. She has a book, um, uh, not just cash flow. So it might not be uh, you know it, it's a very good um, local book to talk about what we're all doing there. I think she had a corporate job that she left and it's all very like BC oriented, cash flow in Canada oriented. So kind of with a lot of books and everything that can kind of reach internationally, this is kind of a close to home cash flow book that can show you the power of real estate. Nice. And I'll give a quick plug to our buddy, Gary Spencer Smith, who actually just purchased revenue from them and is rebuilding out the brand and doing some incredible stuff with it. So uh, he's actually publishing another book under the same brand, I think. So just absolutely amazing. Um, jump into a few, would you rathers? Would you rather have an easy, quick renovation, but end up with the average numbers at the end or have a nightmare reno and headaches that go along with it, but get great numbers from it? Somewhere in between, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, 
probably uh i would imagine an easier reno you can do more deals with so cool. but yeah somewhere in between i think is your golden spot fair enough would you rather spend a lot of time general contracting uh, a property yourself and have it done to perfection or would you rather sub it out and have limited time into it but only 70 percent up to your standard uh, I mean, for myself personally, I would sub it out, but I would general project so I can make sure that it's done up to my standards and properly. It's always a tough one as a trades guy, because sometimes you're such a perfectionist that it's like, I can't pass it on to anybody else. But at the same time, like, I want my time back. It's always that fight between them. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, the final question here, would you rather sleep outside in a sleeping bag for one night in the winter? or have to do with plunged backup toilet overflowing from one of your tenants? Oh man. <laughs> this one's tough because we're talking up north. So yeah. <laughs> sleeping bag. So uh, yeah, I'll take the plunged toilet. All uh, right. Because of the temperatures. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one too. <laughs> do you do all your own property management up there? Yes, we do. And uh, generally we offer that in our uh, JV partnerships as a, cool. uh, we, we watch it and make sure that it's running important. Awesome, man. Well, this has been really great. I've, I've loved digging into a, a new town, especially here in like our backyard being BC, you know, being born and raised in Victoria, looking for cash flow can be tough sometimes. And uh, it looks like you're finding some really awesome opportunities up there that, uh, you know, can really uh, create some wonderful uh, passive income. Um, I just want to say thank you to you and, and for all the preparation that you did to this. Uh, why don't you just tell everybody like, how they can contact you again and just like any kind of final words that you have. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, thanks guys for having me on here. It's really great. And, um, I guess, uh, again, you can just reach out to me on Facebook, Evan McLeish. Uh, you can reach out to my email, McLeish underscore one at hotmail.com. I'm actually, I'm also, um, active on the reinvestors page on Facebook. Reach out there. Um, you know, if you are interested in Prince George and investing up here, please reach out. Like I said, uh, I'm more than happy to share the info I have and talk to you about investment opportunities. Cool, man. This has been awesome. And thanks again for being so active in our, our community page. Uh, all of our interviews like this are released first in our community page. So if you want to, if you're watching this on YouTube or something like that, or, or somebody else's um, Facebook you know, page or channel or something, uh, just hop into Facebook and, and look up uh, the Reinvestors community. And uh, lots of great conversation and activity happens in there. Investors from all across the country. Uh, there's just daily conversation, daily posts, questions, answers, you know, live trainings, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's really, you know, a uh, really supportive community. So regardless on if you're a beginner or advanced, you're really going to get a lot of value and connections out of it. And uh, thank you so much for watching this awesome interview with Evan. Join us on our next episode as we continue interviewing uh, uh, real estate experts from across Canada and learning what strategies work and where. And with that being said, we are a complete wrap, guys. I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. And uh, looking forward to seeing you on our next journey. Thanks, Thanks again, so Evan. Much, Dev. Hey, thanks, guys.